Hello Android developers. My name is Mohsen and I'm back with another video about Android Picture in Picture API and while learning how it works, we will apply some of the best practices using this API. Before we dive in, allow me to invite you to subscribe to this channel if you are interested in Android development tips and hit the bell button to get notified whenever there is a new video. With that said, make sure not to miss my interview with Android community active members. You will find real gem among those talks. The talks are also available as podcast version. You just have to search for Android Developer Tips channel on your favorite podcast app. Now let's dive into the Android Picture in Picture API. Starting in API level 26, also known as Android 8, the system allows activities to launch in picture-in-picture -picture mode. This mode is mostly used for video playback, but good to know that except for the small window size and having no user interaction, it works as a normal sized activity. I have a sample application which uses ExoPlayer to play a short video from project raw folder in a loop. Also, as a good user experience, when the activity goes to the background and unpaused method gets called, I pause the video and on resume I start playing again. Let's run and see it in action. To add picture-in-picture picture to your app, you need to define your activities that should support this method in your manifest by setting supports picture-in-picture picture true. Also, you should specify that your activity will handle the layout configuration changes so it doesn't relaunch when the layout change occurs during picture-in-picture -picture mode transitions. In this sample app, I have a button which I'm going to use to switch to picture-in-picture -picture mode. First thing first, we need to ask Package Manager if Picture-in-Picture -picture feature is supported. Using this lazy delegation, we can make sure this value will be extracted after activity is created. Like all new APIs, if your app supports older Android APIs, you need to wrap this code inside an SDK version check if block. Now using the is PIP supported value, we can decide to proceed or skip executing the user request. Of course, a better user experience is to not showing the picture in picture button if this feature is not supported instead of ignoring user interaction. To enter the picture-in-picture -picture mode, an activity must call enter picture in picture mode method and pass some parameters. I'm going to define a function called getPIPParams for generating the picture-in-picture -picture parameters. The picture-in-picture -picture parameters class has a builder that we should use to set required settings before asking system to switch to picture-in-picture -picture mode. This builder has setters for different parameters.
In this example, I will set aspect ratio of the picture in picture window based on my video, which is 16 to 9. I will also set source rectangle hint, which will be used by the system for a smooth transition between picture in picture and full screen mode. Using the view class get global visible rectangle method, we can have the player rect value. This block should also get wrapped into an SDK version check if block if your app supports older Android APIs. Everything is set, now let's run the app and test the PIP button. As you can see, the player goes to picture in picture mode and user can move it around the screen or get back to the full screen mode. But we are also showing unnecessary content like video title in this mode. Let's fix this issue. To properly handle UI during picture in picture mode, you should override the unpicture-in-picture -picture mode changes callback to hide or show UI elements that you want in picture-in-picture -picture mode. The is in picture in picture mode boolean parameter tells us if we are in this mode or not. Let's rerun the app and see the result. Another issue in this example app is that the video pauses when we switch to picture in picture mode because of unpause and unresume lifecycle call by entering and leaving picture in picture mode. To fix this, we can check is in picture in picture mode value and make sure that our content keeps running if it is just a switch to or from picture in picture mode. There is a callback called on user leave hint to get notified when the user is intended to leave your app and decide if you want to continue showing your content in picture in picture mode or not. But since Android 12, the apps can set auto enter enabled instead of waiting for the on user leave hint callback, which means you can set up picture in picture parameters beforehand. For example, when your video playback or your map navigation starts. For sure, you can disable picture-in-picture auto-enter when your content is paused. Since this method is introduced in Android 12, 
and we need another SDK version check if block, we have to define a variable for the builder. For testing this feature, I need to set up an emulator running API level 31 or higher cause my current one is 30. By running the app, you will notice that pressing the home button acts like pressing the PIP button and our content keeps running even though the user has theoretically left our app. As I mentioned before, user cannot interact with your UI in picture in picture mode and also you have a tiny window to show details. Instead, the picture in picture window can display actions when the user taps the window to interact. If your app has an active media session, then play, pause, next and previous controls will appear automatically on top of your content window. In this example app, I don't have it, but I would like to define a custom actions using the picture in picture parameters builders set actions method before entering picture in picture mode. You can also set actions when calling enter picture in picture mode method with proper parameters. For every action, we should create a remote action object which require an icon, a title, a content description for accessibility users, and a pending intent. For icon, I'm going to insert a vector asset from material icons. I will set the title as more info and content description as more info action. Now let's create a pending intent which will open this YouTube channel. The pending intent will be based on intent action view and a URI pointing to the link we want to open when the user clicks the more info action. I will break it to separate variables to avoid a long unreadable line of code. Now that the remote action is ready, we need to create a list of it. Just keep in mind that the number of actions you can add is limited. And you may want to check get max number of picture in picture actions value first.
As the final tip, if you set your activity launch mode to single task, you can allow your users to switch to picture-in-picture -picture mode without leaving the app. For example, let's say you can let them watch a video in a floating window on top of the video's playlist activity. That's it, you can find the sample app repo in the description and if you like to support my channel, do not forget to subscribe, like and share it with other Android developers. Bye.